morning or late night. Yeah. <laughs> Our student athletes from the University of Central Florida, Aubrey Dawkins, Taco Fall, and B.J. Taylor will open the questions from the floor this time. Start in the back right corner. Uh, for B.J., I wonder if there was any talk this morning about the, the game last night at all. Uh, yeah, yeah, we went over uh, some of the things we did good against VCU, uh, some of the things we did bad, and uh, you know we moved on to our next opponent. So that's, that's our main focus right now is getting ready for the game tomorrow. Back row in the middle. This is for BJ Ortaco, CL Brown with The Athletic. If you didn't know that Aubrey was Coach Dawkins' son, like how, how would you – <laughs> How would you describe kind of the relationship of father and son? Do you guys see it strictly as coach and player, or can you tell at, at points that, you know, it's father-son? Taco? Uh, um, I mean, he's – I see him as a not, – not really as a father and son, but as a player and coach. Um, he, obviously, he coaches him really hard, like he do for the rest of us, and uh, he treats him the same way that he treats all of us. I mean – I would say basically pretty much all of us are his sons, the way I see it. And, yeah, I mean, what Taco said pretty much, uh, and I mean, to add, Aubrey, he's such a good person and, and such a good teammate that he makes it, you know, easy to just, like, be one of the guys and, and, and just fit in with us because of his personality and just how he is and how he approaches every day. Front row, front row right. Uh, Wayne Epps with the Richmond Times Dispatch. Uh, off that, uh, Aubrey, what's your favorite thing about playing for your father, and how has that dynamic kind of evolved over time? Just the, the best part is building our relationship. Um, and now that me being a, a young man in this game and, and having the ability or having the chance to, to be around him at this stage in my life and, and in my career in basketball has just been, it's been priceless. And uh, that's what I love most, just growing every day next to him and learning from him and, and us getting closer, you know, as a father and son and also as a player and a coach. Front row, right side. Dan Walken, USA Today. Taco, it seemed like last night you were maybe having some fun with the idea that Zion might try to dunk on you in the game tomorrow. Um, he, uh, in here earlier, he said, you know, he kind of had fun with it too. He said, what are you supposed to say? Um, do you feel like he is going to try to go at you just to prove a point because you're the tallest player he's ever played against? I mean, I don't, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what his mindset is, so I, can, I cannot speak for him. I'm, but I can speak for myself. I mean, I'm just gonna go out there and try and win the ball game and do everything that I can um, to help my team win the ball game. I mean, you know, basketball plays are gonna happen. Um, you know, I'm gonna be out there, be aggressive, be the rim protector that I am. I mean, Zion, obviously, very talented kid, great kid. I mean, I see nothing but positive, positive things about him. You know, and you know, very high ceiling too. And he also has great teammates, um, great bunch of kids. But he's going to do his job, and I'm going to do my job. And whatever happens, happens. Right hand side. Uh, Aubrey, um, you played at Michigan before you came here. Then you join a team with a with a player, a, a unique, unique player like Taco. Did you have to relearn or adjust to what he does to you know both the opposing team and and how he changes your team as well? He just makes the game easier, um, which is, you know, that's all I can really say. You have a guy back there you can trust to, to, to block shots if you get beat on the drive, a guy who's going to, you know, score 75% field goal percentage of the basket. I mean, that just, it's a nice, it's nice to have that nice comfort back there. <laughs> Left side, Pete. Uh, Pete Iacovelli, Associated Press. Aubrey, uh, as much affection as you know your dad has for Duke and Coach K, do you think he'll do anything? I mean, how do you think this matchup is affecting him, if at all? And not, not, I mean, he's a game-by-game game kind of guy. Same mentality no matter who we play. The name of the jersey doesn't really matter to him. We just play our game, focus on just the win. That's really it. Um, yeah. Right-hand side, second row. Mitchell Gladstone, Duke Chronicle. Aubrey, going off that, do you have any memories of, I know you used to spend time with him when he was in a coach at Duke and – being around the team, do you have any memories from any specific teams or any specific players that you grew up with as a kid? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I spent a lot of time around, around the guys, especially growing up. Um, the, the Chris Duhans, the Dante Jones, all kind of players I could list off, and, and and just and just seeing them as I you know grew up and, and worked out in the gym and camera sometimes after their practice was done or, or working out in car gym. 
Um, so yeah, that was like, a lot of good memories, and, and, and it was good for my foundation to see that. Left side. Uh, this is for uh, all, all the players. I mean, you've already made history. This is UCF's first NCAA win. Does that kind of, I don't know, do you get to play a little looser now, a little freer? What's the mentality going into this matchup? BJ, and then we'll come this direction. Uh, it's the same mentality that we've had for every game this season. Just, just try to go 1-0. Oh. Uh, that's my focus every game, and that's the same focus we're going to have for this game. Um, same thing as same thing as you say, you know, we just try to go 1-0. Oh. Um, obviously, we made it that far sticking, sticking to our principles, so why change it? We're just going to keep the same mentality and move on. Yeah, what they said, just, just, you know, try and get a win the best we can. Whatever we can do to get that win is the goal. Focus on, on our principles and, and what we stick to and let the rest take care of itself. Back row on the right side. Yeah, our Kip Coons, Press Box View. Uh, for BJ, you're, um, you're one game into your NCAA tournament run now, and you're playing one of the most storied programs in basketball history, five national championships, uh, all the attention that Duke has gotten. How do, you, how do you approach that, and, and is it a little staggering to think, you know, what you face tomorrow? Um, I mean, for us, like I said, we're going to approach it the same way we've approached every game this season. Uh, Coach does a great job of, of treat, making us treat every game like it's a championship game, you know, making us treat every game, no matter who we're playing, like it's the biggest game of the season. So, I mean, we're prepared for this, uh, and now it's just about going out there and executing. Right side. Taco, Mike DeCorsi of Sporting News. Um, you guys, this is your first t time in the NCAA tournament uh, as a group. So is there, a, is there a difference in the attention paid? Does it change anything about going through and preparing for the game and going through the game? I mean, we have, we've been preparing for this moment all season, so nothing has changed. We've been, we've been taking the championship approach to everything that we've been doing so that when times like this, we, when time, when times like this come, we will be ready. So um, nothing has changed from how we approach things. We've been, you know, following the same process, just following the coach's plan and, you know, and just taking care of business. Back row. Taco Allison Williams, ESPN. Uh, what are the keys to using your height advantage to make sure that you don't end up on any Zion Williamson highlight reel? <laughs> I mean, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a great defensive player, but I just, I don't want that game to be about me and Zion. Um, it's, you know, obviously it's very exciting. You got a guy who's seven six. You got a guy who's a, another guy who's a freak athlete, very talented. But at the end of the day, it's a ball game. It's basketball. We can't make it bigger than what it really is. And I don't want it to be like a freak show between Zion and I. It's it's bigger than that. It's UCF versus Duke. You know, they have great they have great players, talented guys. We have also great players, very experienced, talented guys. And we go go out there and do whatever we can to win the ball game. Back row in the corner. So BJ, so what would it mean to this uh, program, to the team, to you, if you guys do win tomorrow? Uh, it would mean a lot. Um, that's our focus. Um, that's what we're here to do. It's, you know, everybody's here to win. So, like I said, you know, before we, we get to that, we're just, you know, getting ready for practice today and just trying to prepare to make that happen. Any more questions for the student athletes? Thank you, guys. The locker room will remain open until 435.
Whiskey, right? I don't know. <laughs> it's in April, <laughs> right? Absolutely. That's when we turn whiskey, right? <laughs> Head coach Johnny Dawkins with the University of Central Florida. Questions for coach? Back row, right side. Johnny Kip Coons for Press Box View. During the season, how often do you and Mike Krzyzewski on average talk? And when, when was your last conversation you know, prior, to the, prior to the tournament? Uh, well, we're always going to be in touch. Uh, that's just going to happen. Uh, I can't say that the frequency, but we're always in touch. Probably the last time, you know, phone conversation, I want to say probably two weeks ago, maybe or less. <laughs> so we had a good conversation somewhere around then, just uh, talking about, you know, one of our wins and he's called and just kind of caught up with him. You know, he caught up with what we were doing. And of, of course, we follow each other's, you know, progress, see how each other's teams playing and stuff. So uh, I would say quite frequently. Front row on the right. Hey, Johnny, Jeff Gravely, WRL-TV. Uh, how do you process the, so m the many ties that your team has to the Duke program? You played there. Vince played there. Your son grew up around the program. H what kind of impact will it have on this game, and what kind of impact will it have on how you prepare for this game? Well, I mean, I, mean, I think, you know, for us, you know, having been a part of the Duke family, of course, I mean, it, it was special. And so we, we all realized that. We all felt fortunate to be a part of it and uh, felt fortunate to play for coach and work for coach, you know, in my case. And uh, my son, growing up in Durham, of course, that was always special. He was around the team. He's always in the gym working out afterwards. So, uh, of course, it's a, I'm sure it's a unique feeling for him as well. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, for all of us, it's just, uh, like I said, it's awkward, too, because you don't feel, I mean, it's someone that you – work for you you're very close with and like I said before I think no one looks forward to that type of situation It's something that you know happens because we're in a tournament and it means we've done well because we all moving forward but it's not something you look forward to front row on the right uh, Mark Armstrong with ABC 11 back in the triangle there may be elements of what Jeff asked you to this question too obviously there's been a ton of water under the bridge and your colleagues and friends now but there, is there still a part of you that is like Johnny Dawkins, the freshman who showed up to Duke and he was your coach? <laughs> That's always there. You probably put me on the line now, I'll probably start running suicides. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just, that's just part. You, you know, once someone's coached you, you know, now you're coached for the rest of your life. And, uh, and that's, that's how it is. And, uh, you know, I have, of course, the, the utmost respect for a coach and his program. Like I said, I was a part of it and loved it. And uh, I love coach, so that's, that's easy. Front row on the left. Johnny, Steve Weisman, Durham Herald Sun. You went through this at Stanford a few years ago when you guys played Duke up in Brooklyn. Does that take away some of the awkwardness that you've been through this before? Do you draw on that experience as far as being able to set all that stuff aside and, and approach the game? No, I, you know, I think that does help some, that, we, that we've done this once before where we were in this environment and it's, it's still the same. You know, you still don't, you know, relish it, but it's still something that you've already experienced. So you understand everything that's kind of that will be around this you know and that that's a good thing you know for me and I'm sure the same thing for coach just you know he's done it with with several former players before I had never done it with coach until that time so it was good to kind of you know understand you know what that was all about left side Pete Yacobelli Associated Press Johnny uh, you said the other day you hadn't had a lot of chance to watch the Duke guys play I assume that you've watched a bunch more film now in preparation, what do you think of Zion and RJ and Cam and the rest? Very impressive. Uh, I mean, you know, they don't play like freshmen. Uh, really, really talented young men. Uh, and, and I've seen a lot of freshmen, you know, over the course of you know, my career, of course, that, that have been talented. But they have, they have a certain, you know, will about them. They have a certain togetherness about them that oftentimes only happens with maturity and playing a lot of games together. You know, I watch them. They seem to have fun, you know, uh, Plan, plan together, you know, making each other better on the floor. And a lot of times with young players, finding that, that chemistry is difficult. And uh, they seem to have found that. And I think that's why they're having so much success. Right side, Jonathan. Jonathan Jones, Sports Illustrated, Johnny. Hey. Uh, specifically on Zion, how do you prepare to guard a guy like him when you watch the tape? And I assume you've probably watched the last at least four or five of his games. And he's been playing extremely well those games that you've probably watched. How, how do you prepare for a guy like him with his size? You obviously know what you have at the rim with Taco, but outside of the painted area, how do you, how do you prep for that? 
Well, you know, we have to understand that he's a great player, you know, on any level. Uh, his skill set with his size and his explosiveness makes him unique. And, and you're not going to stop Zion. I mean, we, we don't go into we're going to stop Zion wins. You know, we want to try to contain a player like that. And uh, you know, that, that, that's a success for you. If you can try to just contain him uh, because he's going to find ways to score the basket. He's going to find ways to make, you know, spectacular plays. He's done that all his life. Uh, we have to understand that we can't let that, you know, be a distraction to what we do. Front row, right side. Johnny, what are the challenges and the rewards of getting a chance to coach your son? I'm not talking about in peewee ball or AAU, but <laughs> high division one basketball. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's been really special. You know, I, I didn't know what to expect. I've said this often. I, I really had no desire to coach him early on because I'd worked with him every single day. You know, we'd be in the gym after my – you know, after I finished work at Duke, I'd bring him to the gym and we'd train. You know, when I was at Stanford, the same thing. So we've done that pretty much all his life. And so I would say the last thing I wanted to do was like, if we're doing this every single day, now I'm going to grab you and I'm going to coach you. And, and so I kind of avoided it. And uh, just the timing just worked out where we could get together. And uh, the timing was right. And I think he was ready as far as where his maturity level was. I was ready where my career was. And it's been terrific. And, and other coaches that told me, I said Steve Alford being one of the main ones, Ray McCollum, another coach, they all said, if you get a chance to coach your son, you should do that. And, uh, and that always kind of stuck with me as I was coaching in my college career when he was of age. And so when the opportunity presented itself, we did it. And they were absolutely right. And I've enjoyed every moment of it. It's been, it's really been special. Left side. Yeah, Mike Bianchi, Orlando Sentinel. Coach, I know it was 37 or 38 years ago, but can you recall – why you chose Duke when Duke was struggling at the time when you could have gone anywhere? Well, absolutely. Uh, you know, a few, a few reasons. I mean, one, of course, Coach K. I mean, you know, he hadn't accomplished what he's accomplished now. You know, he's arguably the greatest college coach uh, to coach our game. But, you know, back then I still had a belief in, you know, who I thought he could become. You know, he painted a really good vision for, for us as a team, what he thought we could do. He painted a great vision for me, what I thought, what he thought my career could be like. And so that trust in, in him, that person, was important. And they did a great job recruiting. I mean, they spent, you know, a, 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 lot, a large amount of time recruiting me, you know, years of developing relationships. It wasn't something just happened that, that first year on a whim. They started recruiting me, and I'm almost all, all of a sudden I'm going to go to Duke. It was, it was a, you know, it was, a, it was years of recruiting. That was a, that was a great commitment. And uh, so with, with his commitment, you know, with, with Duke University being the, the institution that it was, uh, you know, they made me feel real comfortable. They made me feel it was the right decision. Back corner, right side. Coach, do you get a sense of how your team, not only facing, you know, in a tournament game, but facing the tournament's number one overall seed, the number one team in the country, do you get a sense of how your team is sort of attracted to that kind of challenge? Uh, you know, I, I think my team will, will come out with a, with a sense of maturity. You know, I, I think they'll come out with a, with a focus. Uh, and, and that's what they've been, you know, all year. You know, you know they've, they've come out and they've competed, you know, against everyone we've, we've played against. And, and that's, I think, largely because of the leadership. You know, our senior leaders, guys that have been around, uh, they, they've demanded that from all of our players. So, you know, I think they'll continue to lead the same way they have all season. Yesterday, uh, Colin Smith played eight minutes. Uh, I wonder what you said to him after the game and what you really need from him in this game tomorrow. Well, I mean, you know, Colin, it, every game is different. And, uh, you know, we found something that worked well for us, you know, during the game versus VCU. And when something's working well for you like that, and, and we've done this, you know, during other games during the season, I'm sure you know that, Brian, where, you know, minutes may be divvied out differently, but it's based on our opponent and what's working well for us. And so it was a night where some things were working better for us, and so we stuck with those. But uh, Colin is always, you know, a, a player that, that, that we believe in, and, and we know he can make, you know, huge contributions for us. So it's just based on personnel, basically, and uh, that decision was made. Coach, Left side, second row. Coach, it seems like the last few games, uh, Frank Burtz has really contributed coming off the bench late. I mean, last night he had a couple threes, had a couple big offensive rebounds. Talk about what he brings. Uh, tomorrow night's matchup and coming off the bench for you guys late like that. Well, as much as, as much as he contributes making threes, 
you know, I just love his energy and his effort. You know, he makes a lot of, you know, winning basketball plays, a lot of plays that kind of can go unnoticed because he'll make threes and everyone sees him knocking down and, and getting points. But uh, I just love his overall game. He plays with great energy. He plays the right way. He plays to win. Coach, back row on the right. Yeah, our Kip Coons, Press Box View. Johnny, uh, having grown up in Mike's system, is there any advantage to you tomorrow knowing you know, the way they like to run their sets or the, or the way they do things? You know, it's, 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 it's different, Kip, from when, you know, I was there coaching and when I was there playing for him. As you know, I mean, coaches, I mean, he's the master of adapting to change in time. So I was there, you know, over a decade ago. I mean, this game has changed so much since then, and coaches adapted to that. So, you know, how they play now and the schemes they use, you know, aren't the same schemes that they used when I was coaching there and definitely not the same schemes when I, when I played for them. So uh, he's changed a lot, and I've been watching a lot of tape, of course, all last night and, and this morning. And uh, it's, it's a different team. You know, there are different players he's coaching, and, and there's a different style that he's utilizing to bring the most out of those guys. Anything else for Coach? Thank you. All right, guys, take care.